now. Hello, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning back into the Brit Kanawa Wes Hancock podcast. I got my 31st guest for my 31st episode, Mr. Gene Gunther. How you doing tonight, Gene? Doing fine. Say hi to everybody. You bet. I'm excited for this one. Gene uh, played for Coach Steve Everett, and I'm fascinated with that um, era of football uh, back in the 50s and 60s. So I'm pumped to get into some Steve Everett era football and some wrestling and just some other good stories. So like always, though, before we get to Gene, I have to recognize my sponsors. Um, I have 12 sponsors for tonight. So I was telling Gene, we're looking at $160 worth of sponsorship money going to the Legacy Fund tonight. So I gotta make sure I honor those sponsors and thank them for, for giving to the Sanger Legacy Fund. Uh, my 12 sponsors tonight are Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, Mary Jo's Hobo House and Catering, Jay Hiscox of State Farm Insurance, uh, Vexen Fishing and Tackle Industries, owned by Derek and Liz Ng, Britt Bar and Grill, Slayer's Gunsmithing of Fontenelle, First State Bank, Mojo Productions, Daniel's Auto Collision, Katie's Salon and Tanning, Deemer Realty, and Nick Schmidt. So thanks again to those sponsors. We'll get to each one of them throughout the episode. Uh, winter sports update, starting with boys basketball, Coach Jay Hiscox. They are 7-10 and 10 overall. They just beat North Iowa Tuesday night up in Buffalo Center. My brother coaches for Buffalo, so um, one of those ones I'm torn on, who I want to win that game or not. But the, the Brit boys came back and uh, had a nice comeback win, 48-44. Uh, tomorrow night, the 28th of January, they're home against Four City. District assignments just came out for boys. We're paired with Garrigan, GTRA, Lake Mills, North Iowa, North Union, Northwood, Kensett, St. Edmunds, and West Bend Mallard. Uh, pairings will come out in the next week or so. Girls basketball, Coach Paul Sonius are 13-4 and four overall. They're third in the conference right now. Four Cities also come to town, of course, ne- tomorrow night. Uh, I want to say congratulations to Kennedy Kelly. She scored her 1,000th career point the other night against North Iowa. They don't have regional pairings out yet. They should in the next week or so. They usually play right around Valentine's is the first round of regionals. And then wrestling with head coach Mark Sanger. Uh, last I saw, they were ranked seventh in the dual team rankings. And congratulations also to Matthew Francis. He broke a school record for 160 wins in his career at West Hancock. So congrats to Matthew. Uh, Their sectionals are February 5th at South Hamilton and Jewel uh, with Belmont, Eagle Grove, Emmitsburg, North Union, South Hamilton, and St. Ed's. Uh, Top two from each weight class move on to districts at Emmitsburg the following Saturday. Like always, if you want to give to the Sanger Legacy Fund, go ahead to sangerstrong.com to give. It's a quick, easy way to give online and help support the Sanger Legacy Fund. Uh, Steve Lansing, the athletic director, just put a post out there that they've been working on a new Hall of Fame for Britt West Hancock, and the Sanger Legacy, Legacy Fund is proudly sponsoring and giving to that endeavor to help fund the Hall of Fame. It's going to be a pretty, pretty neat thing to honor a lot of a lot of great athletes, coaches, and supporters of the um, athletics activities. You name it, it's all going to be in there. So, all right, way back when, five episodes ago, in episode twenty-six, I talked to the 2021 seniors on the state championship football team 10 episodes ago on episode 21 and Hagen 15 episodes ago on episode 16 Chuck Boozman 20 episodes ago on episode 11 the Gopals and 25 episodes ago on episode 6 Mark and Jim Timmerman it's just crazy to think 25 episodes ago already this thing's going for a year plus now and I'm pretty proud of it all and happy um, that things are going well so My first sponsor for tonight, and then we'll get to Gene, who's sitting there patiently, is uh, Daniels Auto Collision in Charles City. Owner Jason Daniels is a 1990 West Hancock grad. Whether you need a minor fix-up or complete collision repair, Daniels Auto Collision is North Iowa's premier auto body shop and will have your vehicle back on the road looking better than new. With over 30 years experience and all major insurances accepted, why take your chances with anyone other than Daniels Auto Collision? Call them at 641-220-3805 or email them at danielsautocollision at gmail.com or check out their website, danielsautocollision.com. All right, Gene, you ready to go? Shake off the nerves a little bit? (laughs) I've got a a, a thing on the screen that says continue. Should I click on it? Because it's blank and you and I out. Oh, we're off? Yeah, just for us. Um, Hit continue, yeah. 
Are we okay. good? All right. Well, I'm afraid yep. to do it. We were saying before I hit record, technology's great, but sometimes it's a pain. So it might, if your screen goes idle for a while, you might have to hit that again. So I can still see you on my end though, so we should be good. All right, Gene, thanks again for coming on and doing this. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm pumped to have someone talk about Steve Everett, talk about your teammates back in the day. Um, Steve Everett was a legend uh, before Bob Sanger was a legend at Brit, and I the more I've learned about the history of Brit, I'm just intrigued with this guy and the teams that he had and want to make sure everyone remembers and knows the that era as well. So before we get to him, though, and your football days and wrestling days, what was it like growing up in Brit back in the 50s? Well, I was a farm boy, and we moved up here in 46. I was a year old, so I've been in Brit most of my life. Yep. Uh, we went even went to country school until third grade. So football was pretty pretty vague to me. I hardly knew what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was a slow learner, and uh, but I played through junior high and, and high school. Tremendous teams and people ahead of me that I think really carried us along. Uh, I don't know where to start with that. Um, when Steve did, we're going to work on Steve Everett first, apparently. Um, I, I was, we'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about your upbringing with your farming and stuff. What, what was farm life like back then? It's a little different than it is in 2022, I'm guessing. Well, I, I don't think uh, the bus has always ran, we didn't have any days off. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> but yeah. as farm kid, you always had chores to do and get home. I, I appreciate my parents. Uh, let me participate in sports. I was in music quite a bit too, but that yep. maybe took away from sports. Um, uh, thinking back where we, my brother played football, probably during those eras when it was, didn't do too good before Steve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, before, the, before Everett, they had a couple conference championship seasons, but they were few and far between and there were some pretty lean years in the in the 40s and early 50s and whatnot, but Everett came and kind of turned that around. So, uh, I, was it your biggest uh, knowledge about football? And I don't think I really put the game together much till I was junior senior. Yeah, and, well, that's what I felt. There was just tremendous mentors ahead of me. And yep. it, as our that that team that I was on, and that was '62, I guess. Was that, we were, we didn't want to lose. I think it was the biggest mentality of it. We mm -hmm. were small. The line average was probably 155. Yeah. And uh, we uh, we were lucky, I think, to win that fifth time, which put the record on. And then Steve could, uh, stepped down as a coach. But we didn't realize, I don't think at the time, yeah. I don't think anybody realized that he had a nickname was a skinhead, and I don't know too many do <laughs> that. <laughs> and I know why, but uh, Marvin and I talked about it. Um, I jumped around on you. Know, uh, I enjoyed high school, and especially the sports and the music. Um, and I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and my draft number came up after high school, and of course I went to. Uh, to the army and ended up in Vietnam. And uh, when I came home, I uh, farmed with my dad a while and met my first wife, she was from Clary, and then we had three children. And that lasted about 17 years. And it was up and down with my father. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't farm all the time. We split at one time, went back together. And uh, struggled with that. And then, uh, oh, I was, got divorced for about five years. And then I met Julie Purdy. She was teaching here in Brit. Yep. And as you know, she was from Fontenelle, uh, Bridgewater Fontenelle School System, which you seem you taught yep. there. Okay, so you're familiar with that one. Yep. Yep. Uh, she was, uh, been super for my life. We had two children from this this marriage and uh, 
you don't need many more about children. This is get them. That when I, I continued farming and my father retired, and I, that's what I I did for forty years. Mm -hmm. And then you probably knew I've been a member of the River City Chorus for fifty-two years. That just amazes me. Yet where the time yeah. has gone. Oh man, it, it goes fast. Yeah, so, so you mentioned Bridgewater Fontenelle, because I'm going to get to our next sponsor. This is really neat. Um, I, my second teaching job was at a school called Nottaway Valley, and that's Greenfield, Bridgewater, Fontenelle are the three towns. And your wife, Julie, is from Fontenelle originally. And I got teaching there and getting to know people and made the connections between Julie was from there and the, the, the family back home and stuff. And... Uh, Becky Rash was a coworker of mine, and I loved Becky. She was such a neat person, such a good teacher. All the kids loved her. All the staff loved her. Um, and she passed away, I, has it been two years now, maybe? She had cancer. Her brother also passed. He was the superintendent at Creston, and it was so, such Great. a hard thing to deal with. And um, uh, when I put online that I was doing all these podcasts, I, six months ago I put a list out there, who wants to sponsor these podcasts? And my old secretary from Nottaway Valley Middle School reached out to me, and it's the uh, big S behind me, Slayers. They said, we'll sponsor the Gene Gunther one, because I know Gene's wife, Julie, and um, has that Fontenelle connection. So I thought that was really neat that they wanted to do that for this episode. So without further ado, here's my next sponsor, and then we're going to talk some sports with Gene. Um, like I said, Julie grew up in Fontenelle. I taught at Nottaway Valley for two years. And then here comes Slayer's Gunsmithing of Fontenelle. They reached out to me and wanted to sponsor this episode. Um, here's a little bit about Ted and Lynn Christensen down in Fontenelle. Ted says his name is Ted Christensen, and he'd love to take a moment to tell you about himself and the dream of his that came to fruition, which was Slayer's Gunsmithing LLC. He's lived in Fontenelle his entire life. He was raised on a farm south of town that was operated by his late father. He grew up farming, taking care of livestock and hunting, and it's there that his love for the outdoors began. He uh, fast forwards several years and he chased his dream of commingling creation and the outdoors right into college. He graduated with honors when he was 51 years old. Thus, Slayers Gunsmithing LLC was born. At Slayers, he offers several services for his clients. He can assist you in cleaning as well as the repair of clients' personal firearms, order and ammo and firearms, complete machine work, specific to gunsmithing and build custom firearms, just to name a few things that he can do. Located on the west edge of Fontenelle, Iowa, uh, living in the area all his life has benefited him to knowing the demographic and how he can best serve his clients locally. Um, but he wanted to say anybody's welcome to come down to Fontenelle. So check them out on Facebook. That's Slayer's Gunsmithing. Um, check them out on Facebook. And I only understood about every third word of that whole ad because I'm not an outdoorsy guy, but they assured me that people will know what they're what he's talking about. So, yeah. I'd like to meet him. I don't really recognize the name that long. Yep. Uh, Ted and Lynn Christensen. Like that Bridgewater Fontenelle uh, consolidated with Nottaway, uh, what made Nottaway Valley. At, uh, yeah, Greenfield. Yep. Um, yep. It's a good school. I loved it down there. No. I didn't have to drive an hour each way to get there. I would have stayed probably my whole career. I really, really enjoyed it there. So. All right, Gene, uh, you were a wrestler too, right? Right, right. Tell us, tell us about your wrestling experiences because you had a pretty good career. Well, I, I, uh, Bob Teens and I were pretty good friends. And uh, again, we had tremendous teams back then. And, and uh, I fell into a lot of that. Um, I can remember going through junior high and uh, De Leon came when I was a senior. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know him very well to coach. Um, Ken Townley was the coach at that yeah. time. And when I was successful, uh, I would, I got to play on or wrestle on probably three state teams. I always went to state and just felt like that was just the thing you had to do. Yeah. I can remember when I was a sophomore, I think I, I won the district. Which back in those days, then we're talking 60 years ago. Yeah. It was North Iowa was tough. There wasn't any other sub state or anything. If you won district, you garner to make do well at state. 
yep. back in those days. There just wasn't very many schools that had wrestling. But that particular year, I think the tournament was in Clarion, and I won my last match. I don't know if I pinned him or not, but it gave us enough one more point to win the, the district. And they hoisted me up and carried me out of there. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I was pretty young. So everybody thought, boy, I was going to smoke everything. But I don't think I got through the first round at state. Yeah. Year. Next year, I was a junior. And I think in the district of that one, there was a Bob Patton from Algona that had won state or all second. And I beat him seven to two that, that oh. afternoon. And and never saw him again. <laughs> but he won state that year. So it goes your ups and downs. And I ended up taking a third that year. And that was the year they, they, took, they took state as a team. Both of those years of 61 to 62. Am I saying that right? Yep, yep. You were state champions twice, runner up once, and you tied for third once. So right. you walked away all four years pretty, pretty good spot. Well, third was my senior year. Yep, and you got third individually that year as well. Do you uh, do you remember how close you were to making it to the state championship match? Well, my, I got knocked out with uh, Dale Barr. I remember him. He, he ended up an assistant coach at Iowa State, and he took NCAA twice. Okay. And, uh, he was an awful good wrestler. I think it was four to two, but... <laughs> That's why then you wrestle back all the way for a third. It makes it tough because yep. you're automatic seconds that way. Yep. So, again, that, that whole era, I had a, a bad attitude, I guess. When we come home from the winning state, I, I felt I let my teammates down. And I didn't want to go to the reception. <laughs> Believe it or not. But uh, I don't, I've never told that very much. But uh, I went and uh, hung my head, I guess. I should have been proud. And nowadays, these kids would just love to get to state. But yeah. It's just the uh, way it was. And then Bob and I stayed together on a state. We thought we were good luck for each other. And apparently it was. <laughs> uh, we made a vow to each other that no matter whatever came between us, that we would remain friends if we have. Yep. And, don't know if you know that I introduced his wife to him. So oh, nice. he goes back a long ways and uh, they've been married 60 some years, I think. Nice. Yep. So, yeah. Bob, Bob did okay at wrestling. He was, he was, he was decent, you know, four time <laughs> state champ, not too bad. I never um, could take him down. Yep. Did you guys, I guess you, did you guys practice against each other quite a bit? Not a lot. I was a little heavier, I guess. Yep. I, as a Maybe the freshman, I was at 120 where Bob was, and I wanted to be his backup. No way I could have made the team. Yeah, it just, it's cool, though, how you said you got third, the team won state, and you felt like you let everybody down. Yeah, um, I thought I should have taken state like your bales did. Yeah, it, like in a lot of these podcasts, we talk about the games we lost more than the games we won yeah, sometimes. No, and that... That just speaks volumes of how good some of our programs have been and still are over the years. I, rem I remember talking to Travis Hagan once uh, a couple years after I graduated. He, you know, assistant football coach for years. And we we're talking about the most recent district championship. And then he went back to, yeah, but we lost to Garner last year or something like that. It was just like, we, it's like the losses hurt more than the wins feel good almost sometimes. So that, that that's a sure sign that we've done okay. <laughs> So, I say yeah. I got hurt that senior year of football. I think it, it hurt my last year of wrestling. But yeah, Bill Barr hurt that as much as anything. <laughs> yeah, what was what was Coach Townley like? Because he's another one of those guys that he's in the record book for winning championships, but yeah. that's been enough years people don't know him as much as you'd hope for. Yeah, he uh, came into Brett and he never wrestled in high school. Amazing, mm -hmm. he went. I think he came from the Army and went to Iowa State. So uh, Nichols took him on, and he learned everything he did down there at Iowa State. As a, I think he was the lightweight. He was mm -hmm. short and small. But he was just a good, um, I would say, technician. But he had a good rapport with the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
right back to the basics. And uh, I suppose they didn't think he taught me how to sit side roll. <laughs> yeah. But he was good at trying to emphasize on what you did best and encourage you. And yeah. I, to me, I remember it was, he encouraged cut weight way too much. That's if I had a negative in there. And yeah. I think myself, I wish now would have cut weight, gone up a weight, I'd been much better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what happened to him, or did you keep in touch with him over the years? Well, I think he went. I don't know. I get mixed up with Coach Greg. He went around Chicago somewhere, but uh, Townley went south somewhere. It was almost in the lumber fields, okay. and he he was he was hit by a, a, a lumber truck and killed. Oh, geez. A, few, a few years ago, that was so he didn't get to live out his life. Hmm, that's too bad. Yeah, I haven't. I can't quote what year that was. Yeah, yeah, I haven't gotten to a lot of the wrestling research yet in some of my projects to yeah. kind of dig into that. But I was curious. And then you got De Leon for one year, which had he to been. Just, the... it, 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 he was more junior high, I think. Okay. And he did. He encouraged us. I worked out with him a little bit. Yeah. Did you ever take him down? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I did, but. Uh... I maybe mean, was a little stronger than him. I don't know, but uh, it was a struggle. That Jim Gregg, you know, he was a uh, 190 pounder out of Iowa in NCAA. <laughs> he was like hitting a brick wall. He never moved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just just like when I played football, sometimes we'd say practices were tougher than games. I'm sure in your wrestling oh, room, you were it was constantly tough. going up against the best. So that, it's crazy yeah. how that works. Yeah. Uh, anything else on wrestling that stands out to you? I'm going to get to a few sponsors, and then we're going to hit some football. Yeah, let's go ahead and get back to football. I'll, I'll try to think here a little bit. All right, I'm going to get through three of my sponsors here because I forgot to do one after the uh, Slayers one. Okay. Uh, Mojo Productions, based in Brit, is your full-service DJ business. They specialize in wedding <laughs> DJing. They're fully insured. They give back to the community, and they're the presenter of the Brit Car, Truck, Bike, and Tractor Nights. Contact Jared at 515-408-1074. Send them a message on Facebook. That's Mojo Productions. And then First State Bank. They take pride in their community-based values, and they want to be your bank. They take pride in serving the Eagle Nation communities. They can personalize your banking products to meet the needs of your busy life with free internet banking and their mobile banking app with mobile deposit. They have all sorts of other services, bill pay services, Ag loans, real estate loans, account inquiry, online banking, transfers, you name it, they have it. Great services. Um, check out First State Bank again. Again, try their mobile app with all the conveniences of their online banking. While you're supporting the Eagles, you can check your accounts, make transfers, and pay your bills. Make sure you check out First State Bank and Brit. And then, uh, Gene, I reached out to the Brit Bar and Grill and asked if they wanted to sponsor a couple episodes. And he looked at my list and said, Gene Gunther, I want to do the Gene one. They love Gene up at the Brit Bar and Grill. So uh, the BBG is a veteran-owned sports bar in downtown Brit. They offer family dining, fun, and live entertainment. From ribeye steaks or burgers to roasted chicken or wings, come enjoy a meal and a local game or the biggest of, on the biggest of screens or any of your favorite teams. The restaurant is open 11 to 1 and 5 to 8 on Monday through Saturdays, and the bar is open 11 to 6 on Sunday. I was up there and met up with a buddy, uh, Chad Eisman, and had a drink and a steak and it was excellent. So they've done a great job up there. Lots of good Wes Hancock memorabilia on the walls too. So, yep. all right, let's get to football. Gene, you played for coach Everett from 1959 to 1962. This was what I call the first golden era of football in Brit. Um, we of course all know about the Sanger era from about, you know, the 73 season and 84 until present day. It's been, we've been a juggernaut. Um, but a lot of people, like I said, just don't, remember these times because it's been a while coach everett came to brit in 1955 he led about three or four other programs in the state got them from you know the cellar to the top in a short amount of time came to brit in 55 his first few years were kind of slim lost part of a season due to a flu outbreak but then in uh 58 they won the conference title for the first time in about 10 years and then you never knew a season that existed after that for four, your whole high school career that you didn't win a conference championship in. Um, you were four for four, and you got to watch one as an eighth grader. 
Um, what do you remember? Do you remember him coming to Brit at all and kind of any news around him or was he just another guy? Well, I reminded myself the other day, he came from Ida Grove. I was born yeah. in Ida Grove. So oh, nice. Our family's kind of connected right, right away because uh, he coached a cousin of mine and I never knew that. Okay. And he had a very good winning record down there, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he was Record he came into Britain, fit in. I think the son told a lot of that back history. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know what people yeah, know who we're, who we're talking about. There's Steve yeah. Everett. Yeah, I see he's a sharp dressed guy. Yeah, um, he, he was always, I used to, used to tell the story. He seemed to always know what the other team was going to do. And that yep. is absolutely amazing. Yep. And uh, I was going to talk about some people. This is the team that I played with as our the last conference. And the guys like Marvin DeWard and Stuart Wallace, Jim Thompson, uh, Ed Bootswide, you probably remember him as a, as a policeman. <laughs> okay. The center and um, Benny Capacci and uh, Kraus and um, Scarda was in there. I was a halfback, and Jim Trader was was the quarterback. But uh, Marvin Duard and Gary Colstor was a good friend of mine yet today. But I wanted to say something about Marvin Duard. I thought was just he was a heck of a blocker, and he a lot of those holes wouldn't have opened up, but he wouldn't have been there. And those, like I said, a lot of those guys were tremendous athletes. The story I remember. Of of um, Stuart and and Lee Martian that I think it was Steve ever had them they could take one step one the, uh, the end and and tackle and they would turn and double team and they'd always make a hole yeah we couldn't, couldn't get through and uh, I think Steve's son emphasized that uh, and a lot like Sanger, if a play is running, <laughs> it works. We run her 13 times if we have Yep, it. yep, that's the football I like. Yeah. Um, um, Marv remembers uh, Steve would, he'd play good hard-nosed football, but he'd come and shower with us afterwards. You don't see that very often. And he'd mingle with the guys, and we felt apart, and he took an interest in us. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a personal part of of Steve, uh, before I get off the subject, his wife was my fifth grade teacher, of okay. course, and I, she was one of the best I had ever had. So I, I was around the airports all the way. <laughs> that's cool. Or, and, um, and, go ahead. And that that's neat. You mentioned if you still remember how good a fifth grade teacher is. I, I I'm a fourth grade teacher, and cool. one thing I try to keep in mind is like. Those kids aren't going to remember the math lesson I taught them. It's more the how you treat them, how you make them feel, how you make them feel important. And it, that, that's what I remember talking to Steve Jr. about, um, or the Steve the Second. Sorry, I don't remember what he calls himself. But um, just the way he talked about his parents was, man, all these years later, people still remember how they impacted them. So that, that's something neat to hear again. I always enjoy hearing that type of stuff. So. Yeah, um, so 1959 was your freshman season. Did you guys have a JV team back then, or was it strictly varsity? I you know, I, would, I probably told you, I never played on losing games. No, other guys didn't either because we followed that fifth-year conference all the way through. Yeah, uh, yeah. It absolutely ends up amazing. Yeah. Uh, I don't didn't think much about it back then. And mm -hmm. I could tell you another story. I learned later that my dad never played in a in a losing game. Really? I didn't know that till many years later. Uh, he went to high school in Clarence. That's okay. where he came from. And they only had 11 guys. Hmm. And they, they won all their games through those two high school. And they talked each other into all going to junior college in Clarenda. Okay. And like I said, there was only 11 of them. And if they had one black guy on the team, he said he was the best that we had. And the story is they went, took the train, 
back, this is back in the 20s, during the Depression. Mm -hmm. I mean, like people like my dad, they milk cows for a guy and walk to school or finally got a car and, and they all talk to each other and go in that junior college, all 11 of them, the next That's year. Cool. And they, they, I think it probably was Maryville or something. They took the train down to, to this game and they got down there and that team said, we're not playing you with that black. And so they had a little meeting and the guy said, you go ahead and play those guys without me, but just 10 guys, that's all they had. And just beat the devil out of them. And oh, they, they won 115 to nothing. Jeez, with 10 guys. Yep, that's, oh. that's, and that's a true story. I know it is. <laughs> Ser serves them right, I'd say. You have that type that's of attitude right. towards they people. Act like that. <laughs> you got it. Got what you got coming to you. So yep. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the t lots of towns used to have junior colleges. Britt had a junior college. All those right. places had one kind of attached to the high school and um, pretty good team. Yep. I know Britt junior oh. college had a few good seasons that, that I found in some of my research. So that's pretty neat. Um, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Got started and, and all of a sudden quit. A lot of the yeah. GIs went there after the war. Yep, I think that kept them in business a few extra years is what I read. That a lot of those guys were able to come and go to college on Uncle Sam's dime and um, get some extra schooling, so that's pretty neat. Um, well, who are Marv, your... Oh, uh, go ahead. Marv, Marv reminded me that one of Steve's saying was that anything went wrong or we screwed up some around the poles. <laughs> so <laughs> that was just almost a daily thing. And I yeah. think that was probably the baseball field with the, okay. with the poles were for the lights yep. and many times and i would screw up and something and around the poles was good cool. <laughs> yep that'll do it i challenged steve quite a bit because i probably didn't know my plays too well he said i ought to take those plays and put them in my helmet <laughs> <laughs> get a cheat sheet where when you were in school i don't know the history of the school buildings themselves too much when you were in high school, was it at where the school is now, or was it in the old elementary school that I wouldn't remember? Well, when I started, it was the old elementary, and the high school and the grade school was all in one building. It was, yep. That's why Mrs. Everett, actually, I went to fifth grade at the Memorial Building. We were that, they were that full, and that's okay. when they just, uh, discussed when we said, we need to build a new school, and uh, it took a lot of pressure off. But the high school was a lot where it was, and they kept the grade school. Okay. Because that was junior college, high school, and grade school, all yeah. at once at one time. It, yeah. it was just always too full. Yep. Yeah. That's where I teach Interstate 35. We're a K 12 building at right now, and they've had to add on a few times over the years, and it's, it's an interesting setup. So, sure. was the football field where you played, was that where the football field is now, or was that different as yeah. well? Go out there for for practice. Okay. Uh, but uh, I I was always at the new high school for for football, but that was the field. You're correct. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the old so. day it was underneath or it's uh, where the hospital is. And oh, okay. The practice field was underneath the water tower for the old junior college stuff. Okay, that's cool. Uh, it's stuff like that that I just don't need. I don't even know when I'm, I do quite a bit of research, so I'm always interested in that. Who yeah. were, uh, who were the assistant coaches with Coach Everett back then? I'm not too good. I think that's when Denny Brum came in and there was a, uh, Lamar was around. He was assistant with the wrestling. Very good with kids. Okay. I, I guess I just don't remember very well. Just yeah. seemed like Steve Everett was one you always dealt. Yep, he was he was the head dog. So yeah. yeah, your your freshman year, the only game you guys lost was at Belmont, twenty to twelve. Otherwise, you that first season of your high school career, nineteen fifty nine, you guys ran through everybody, forty two yeah. six, twenty five nothing, thirty four nothing, twenty seven nothing, forty nothing, forty two nothing, forty five to six. Um, your era has a really cool obscure record that I put into the new record book that I'm working on. Um, you guys had. It was like 120 or something consecutive quarters where you didn't allow double digit points. You either gave up one score or zero scores. A hundred and it was like 120 consecutive quarters or something like that. Um, and this year's team that won state in 2021 
they're at like 50 and I, and people are like that's crazy and i'm like they're barely halfway to the record um that you guys set and i know football's different back then than it is now um it was more run oriented um than it is now it's more pass oriented but either way it's still pretty impressive i'd say so. football bigger back then leather on I'm not sure on that. It's passable, but for back in my dad, it was almost like a basketball. That's yeah. why they pass very much. Have heavy leather, I'm sure, too. Yep. Oh, yep. Bad. <laughs> yep. So that was your freshman year, seven and one conference champs for the second time in a row. Your first. Uh, let's get to a couple it's sponsors. A sitting on that on that team. Your <laughs> Yep, there were some good good athletes in that era. I know that. Uh, Bob Nielsen's last year. They were just excellent. Good yep, yep, and he went on to Wartburg, and I think he played football and basketball over at Wartburg. So he did just, he did some damage. Yep. Tremendous athlete, athlete, and everybody just fit in together. Yep. Uh, I don't remember playing any much or anything as a, as a freshman, but as a sophomore, I think Steve let me. I was just fast enough. I think he put me in on the kickoff. And they'd get down there and nail somebody early. And then, then they got real smart to me and they started double teaming and just creamed the hell out of me. Yep. And that was the end of that. Yep. Opens up someone else to make a play, too. Yep. I'm going to get to a couple more sponsors here because, like I said, we had a lot of them, which is awesome. Great. Jay Hiscox, State Farm Team in Brits, a proud supporter of Wes Hancock and the Sanger Legacy Fund. They can help you with all your insurance needs, including auto, home, life, farm, business, and renters. For a free quote or review, give uh, Jay or Lindsay a call at 843-3563. Go Eagles, and thanks to Jay and his team for hopping on board and sponsoring all these episodes, and I keep up on his basketball team. They're, uh, they're improving. I think they'll be dangerous at tournament time. And then I have a returning sponsor. They were my first two sponsor, my first two episodes I had sponsors they sponsored. That's Derek and Liz Ng. Uh, they uh, sponsored, like I said, a few earlier episodes. They're both 2004 graduates. So I went to high school with them for three years. They uh, recently in the last year purchased Vexen Fishing and Tackle Industries. Um, go check them out for different fishing rods, lures for this upcoming fishing season. Go to Vexen, that's V-E-X-A-N, Vexen.com and TackleIndustries.com. Thanks again to Derek and Liz, uh, two Wes Hancock grads for sponsoring. Um, I played football with Derek and I love talking to Liz in school. So I was happy when they said they'd sponsor another couple episodes. All right, your sophomore season. This was the year I really got into. You guys were 8-0, outright conference champs. You played a little more in a, a regular role that season. You got in and scored one rushing touchdown. Uh, do you remember Do you remember the touchdown specifically at all, or is it kind of a blur at this point? I remember before the, the senior year. Before. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, bit, but I say there was pretty good guys ahead of us. You didn't get to play much but as a senior I got to play quite a bit yep, yep, yeah until the injury uh, yep yep what else, how else did you contribute on that team as a sophomore do you play any defense some more special teams remember it all more, like I said on the kickoffs I don't remember playing too much uh, to have as a, a fullback yeah um, safety a lot of that I uh, wasn't in the line or anything yep yeah. Um, looking at the scores here, um, yeah, again, you scores. That doesn't mean that I did any of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there looks like there was chances, but you never know. Um, Thirty-three nothing, forty nothing, thirty-four nothing, twenty-seven six, twenty-six to six. You got a win against Belmont there that you re got a little revenge from the previous season. Barely beat Osage fifteen to seven. One thing I'm curious about. Um, Osage joined the conference, I think, in 58. Do you remember that being a big deal at all with Osage jumping into the North Iowa Conference? Because they were a lot bigger than all the other schools. Uh, but they were they were pretty good teams, and we always had trouble with them. Yep. Uh, you realize that some of those, this, this five-year conference thing, we tied some of those games, but they lost somebody. That yep. came to the conference, so it doesn't look like a perfect win season yeah it doesn't matter all okay. you see in the record book or conference championships that's, so that's, that's where some of that statistics yep i know like this last state championship wes hancock won there was a little controversy at the end and people are like you know what 
in the record book, it shows state championship. Who cares? So oh, coach said you only win by one point. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yep, and then you guys finish the season with a thirteen nothing win against Garner, and then a twenty six nothing win at Buffalo Center. Um, yeah, three straight conference championships, two for you, obviously as a sophomore. Um, did you have a lot coming back for that junior season or did you lose a lot of guys? Do you remember there being a lot of shoes to fill or wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of shoes, concern? You know, like the ones I was talking about. A lot of that was my classmates. Mm. You know, we kind of just stepped into the shoes and I said we were we were small, but didn't want to be the one to lose. <laughs> yep. I think that drove us on, but those guys were they were small, but they hit hard, they hit quick, and they were they were just good football players. And, uh, yep. They'd make holes for us to go through. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember more as a as a senior. I think I, I learned more about football every year. I already got to learn the game, junior senior, and I think then I contributed a little bit. Cool. I said I did plenty on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but just you know, just be a part of the team and uh, do your role. Yeah. I think that's what makes a coach Everett or a coach Sanger, some of those guys, the good coaches they were is they get everybody to be their best. And they, here's your job. You do it. I remember um, one of my buddies from high school, Andrew Fetters was our center and he had one job that was, well, two jobs, snap the ball and take one step and block a guy a step this way or a step this way. And that's all he had to do. And he was an all district player, I think twice um, just, finding those kids that are going to be able to do a couple things really well on the field and you get everybody doing that. And that's where you get conference championship type seasons. So I remember you talking about Steve and I think he, he always had the other team figured out. I just yep. amazed at that place at halftime. <laughs> we yep. have some pretty good drawings. Uh, he, I, I, he called it a million dollar series. He'd go into, I, I call it a wing T when yep. he, straight to the halfbacks when we couldn't get get the game going or uh, make it through the holes we switched to that million dollar series and that would hit the woodwork yeah and it's like dale Bershka would pile through there and uh, we would score that yep dale Bershka is another guy i've read his name a lot and typed his name up a lot he was he was a good athlete too um, what did what did ever did you guys have like film from other teams? How did that work, or was it just read about them in the paper and hope for the best? Well, I think guys like uh, whether it was uh, Brum or not, he did have some awfully good scouts. Yeah. But we didn't have films back in those days, and that's why I give Steve that that credit. He just had them figured out. He yep. was just excellent at that. Yep. And I've, I've read a little bit too, like in the 73 championship season, Coach Sanger had a couple of assistants that would go scout. And it's like, that takes a lot of pride in your program to ask a couple of coaches to be like, hey, you're not going to be at our game tonight. You need to go watch this game so that we can win this game in a week or two. I, I think that's commendable yeah, for those coaches. They know what they need to bring back so they can have their team win. Mm -hmm. Point out. Yep, that's pretty cool stuff. So, all right, before we get to your junior and senior season, um, I'm going to mention my longest running sponsor, Michael and Brianne Ewing of Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, locations in Britt, Kanawha, Clarion, Belmont, and Dows. And it sounds like they've just had another business deal where they've um, expanded a little bit. Mike is a 1998 graduate of West Hancock and his family's privileged to care for the communities of Britt and Kanawha since 1977. Find them online at ewingfh.com. Or on Facebook, call them at 843-3839 or 762-3211. That's Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company. And then Nick Schmidt down in the corner here, you can see his name. He's a 2000 West Hancock grad, and he just wanted to give to the Sanger Legacy Fund. No business attached. He just wanted to give back. So thanks again, Nick, for sponsoring all these podcasts. All right, junior year, fourth conference title in a row, third for you. You guys were 7-1. and one. Um Osage, like I mentioned earlier, tougher, uh, bigger in enrollment, uh, came in a couple years prior. You lost to them seven to six, uh, second to last game of the year. Otherwise, you rolled through every other team except Four City. You guys won on the road there, thirteen to six. Um, you had two rushing touchdowns that season. Some of the names that popped up in my research: Jim Rasmussen, 
Ricky Johnson. I, I, the paper made it sound like he was a fast dude. So I don't yeah. know if you had any insight on Ricky. And then Dale Birchka, Stuart Wallace, some of those other guys. Um, what about the linemen, though? I'm wondering, do you remember uh, who the linemen were on those teams? Not so good on the junior. I don't. But uh, okay. to, to you mentioned, I ended up, uh, we haven't got the track yet. <laughs> <laughs> Two of those guys, I went to uh, went to state in the uh, mile relay. Okay. So they had their speed there. Yep. Yeah, Ricky had some like punt returns for touchdowns and made it There's sound like he could bust one at any time. So, do you know whatever happened to him? I haven't seen I much on him. And he's down in Texas somewhere. Okay. Ricky Johnson. Yeah, Ricky Johnson. Um, I think he ended up a pilot. I don't know if he went to the Air Force or not. Okay. Down around uh, Dallas somewhere. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued when I uh, all this reading I've done on. Uh, for the record book, I just, I'm like, I want to get a hold of this guy and I want to get a hold of this guy. I want to talk to this guy. I wonder where he's at nowadays. And um, I'm just, uh, the Rasmussen's too. There was three or four Rasmussen boys that all did pretty well um, back in that era. So they're all, it's kind of fun to look into all that. Um, hey, yeah, look. Sorry, look I'm, Marv's, I'm not Marv, but you're asking about Rick Johnson. Um, my shop in Britt was the roller skating rink at one time before okay buns, before buns you knew the buns boys <laughs> you played well fun funny story about that yesterday at school my our secretary in the elementary office she handed me a note and says you need to call this guy and i'm like okay I look at it and it says gary buns it says brit iowa has his phone number he was the center on the 1973 state championship team and so I went to Oskaloosa last night to clean a building for my part-time job. It's about an hour away. And I called up Gary and I had never talked to Gary before, but I know the bun's name. And he just wanted to say, Hey, I like the podcast. I have an idea for an episode. If you're interested, we talked for an hour and six minutes until I got to my building. And he mentioned that, that building that you own used to be his in his family. And Oh man, I told him him and I could have talked for six hours last night. We had so much fun talking about football and Brit and everything else. So yeah, he literally got, I talked to him for an hour last night. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, got to know the boys a little bit. I didn't know him ahead of him, Tom. Yep. I thought yep. you are about that age. Yep. Um, Tom in Minnesota Jones. somewhere. Yeah, I couldn't tell you, honestly. So, yeah, hard to, hard to keep track of everybody anymore. But yeah, that's small world. You brought that up because I literally just talked on the phone to him for, over an hour. He was a super awesome guy. So Rick Johnson's sister, if I'm not helped lay the blocks up for that building, I think the folks or relatives built that. Okay. And, and, That's uh, cool. It changed hands a lot. They yeah. Bought, bought it for, for their construction equipment. Okay. Cool. And I am up with that building. Yep. And what do you do with the building? Oh, and all my little toys are in there. Yeah. I brought half the farm left town with me. I didn't have a farm sale. I, yeah. I just repair things in there. Nice. I have a hoist in there. The kids like to come and change their oil. And, and I do a lot of repairs at the church. And I can always have a place to work at. Yeah, cool. Good deal. All right. Story of the night. More sponsors because people want to help the okay. legacy fund. Mary Jo's Hobo House and Catering. Huge supporter of Wes Hancock's. Uh, Athletics and activities for 28 years now, going on 29. Travel Iowa voted the Hobo House having one of the 10 best burgers in the state. Visit Mary Jo's Hobo House for lunch and breakfast every day at 72 Main Avenue South in Britt. Call them at 843-3840. That's Mary Jo's Hobo House, Linda and Mary Jo Hughes, and they also cater. And then Katie's Salon and Tanny, and owned by Katie Walk, mom of Braden Walk, current Wes Hancock athlete. Uh, Braden actually started playing basketball. They thought his season was over and his hand healed. So we're happy to see him get to play out his senior year. Uh, Katie Salon is located in Main, on Main Street in Titanka, has been for 16 years. Services offered are men's, women's, and children's haircuts. Colors, perms, waxing styles, and tanning, plus many brands of retail are available. Find Katie Salon on Facebook or Instagram. Call them at 515-928-2303 for appointments and go Eagles. All right, let's get to your, your senior season, which is always the most fun to talk about because that's the one that stands out usually. 
Um, you guys won the f- five in a row, five straight conference titles, the year four for four, uh, six wins, zero losses, and one tie. Um, your career, unfortunately, didn't end in a win, but it also didn't end in a loss. Um, going back to Osage on the road, um, if I remember my research correctly, they scored in like the last couple seconds of that game. And um, in the paper I was reading that you guys were pretty bummed, obviously, because you wanted to win the title outright and win that last game outright. But um, in the locker room, it was kind of glum. And after a while, someone kind of perked up and said, we just we're still conference champs or something like that, guys. So it wasn't wasn't that bad of a night at the end of the day. lost one of those games. Yeah. Yep. So in, we, in one of those years, we tied the conference with somebody, but it's still gave us conference championship. Maybe yep. that was the yeah, I don't remember which year it was, but that, that happened several times, not just to us, but other schools where teams would tie for the conference, but it goes by win percentage and not head-to-head per se. So. I can't remember the, the 62 year, the junior year, more than anything, it was, we played Osage up there, I believe, and it was cold. The ground was froze. It was, yeah. it was tough to play on. I mean, slide on that stuff and it hurt. But that's the night that they must have had fresh uh, line that they put on for the lines on the field. And whatever how I slid into that stuff, got a whole mouthful. I, <laughs> I could taste that stuff for a whole week. Yeah. I remember yeah. that year. Yeah, that doesn't matter. You're going to ask about the, the senior year more. Yeah. And what stands out to me and everybody talked about is the game with Garner, which I had the only touchdown. Yep, but six nothing against Tom Bush, but he was really good, pretty fast. But uh, Steve Everett <laughs> talks about that that it was an end run around the left, I believe. But the only thing happens, um, Bush just missed me. That's all there is to it. But people think that I outran Bush, so that, so that, <laughs> that was the only touchdown for it against Garner. People could all made a hero out of that, and that was yeah. threes. Uh, Steve said, my my body was out of bounds and my feet were still in bounds <laughs> when we <laughs> took that corner, but it it was quite a night. And then I had good success after that, but uh, there's no way that I could outrun Bush. He'd, he'd, he'd go right around the outside of it on a 220. <laughs> yeah. He was good. He went on to you know, play for Iowa State, and Kansas City, and Canada. He was quite a boy. Oh, he played. He, he played in the NFL. Yeah. Okay, I never knew that. Um, so I, I'm not real good at editing these videos, but if you want to change your story to you outran him, and he yeah. didn't miss you, you could. <laughs> you don't well, have to tell all the details, you know. <laughs> I can add to that story. This Marv Deward lives down in Waterloo, and mm-hmm. there's a, a, guy, a friend of his in his church that played on that team with Garner. Okay. And, he said, I want to meet that Gene Gunther. And he said, he must, he outran Bush. And I said, no, no way. <laughs> Bush you almost know, caught me by the time I got to the goal. So, yeah. You, you don't have to be that honest. I mean, just leave out a few <laughs> details and make yourself sound good. Yeah, but, I, I beat him. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I always joke, so I was a head football coach for two years when I was young and probably too young to be a head coach. I yeah. only won two games in two years. So I like to tell people that my mentor, Bob Sanger, and I won a combined 360 football games. Right. I just don't tell him the part that he won 358 of them. So <laughs> you've got to leave out some details and it'll all work out. So uh, Don't believe anything I'm telling. <laughs> yep, yep. So, yeah, you guys, like I said, you ran through the season except for the last game. Uh, beat Green 20-13, to 13, beat Garner 6 nothing. That was you outrunning Tom Bush. Um, beat Buffalo Center 25 to 6, Four City 14 to nothing, Lake Mills 40 to nothing, Northwood 38 12, Belmont 28 14, and then that tie at the end with Osage 14 14. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, Belmont always had some pretty good teams back then too, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yep. They were always pretty tough. I guess I can add to that whole thing. I don't know if the next game or two I got hurt so I didn't play the rest of the senior year which disappointed me. Yeah. Uh, I, I got hit from two sides and pulled the Achilles tendon and uh, nowadays they fix them pretty good. They just yeah. let you limp around but 
the, the story to that is I don't know if they didn't have a stretch or whatever. They wanted to go take the x rays and all that. They thought I broke my leg. And Doc Camp, do you remember him at all? I know the name, the yeah. Camp Park, yeah. Big, powerful man. And he usually was down at the end zone. And he came in and he said, Put your arms over my shoulder. He carried me into the hospital. Oh, and you don't see that very often. Nope. <laughs> Doctor nope. like that. He's just quite a guy. You know, the park across from the school is named after Doc. Camp. Yep. I, I remember that from growing up. Camp Park. Yep. There were all my first kids. And that was just, nope. We had a pretty good relationship. Yep. Do you, whatever. I don't know much about him. Did he finish he out his career in Brit, live in Brit? He lived in Brit. Most of his, I don't know where he was a doctor before that. He came in and replaced uh, uh, Dr. Brewster. Okay. Dr. Shaw was here at that same time, too. Yep. Do you know how long it's been since he's been gone? I assume he's passed away. It's the last year or two. I missed him when he was here in Brit. I wanted to say hi to him. Okay, so he, he did all right then, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good deal. Yeah. yeah. Also good friends. Yeah, good. Um, who were some of the other players your senior year, some of your teammates and friends? I, I asked earlier about the linemen and some of those guys that don't get their name in the paper and stuff. Do you remember yeah. some of your teammates? Well, that's the one that I read off earlier. Was that Stuart Wallace. He went on to be a, a, a general. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Two star general. We're hmm. still good friends. Lee Marshall and I like said Jim Thompson still lives in Brit. He was off a good guard. And, and Boothroyd was the center. And, and Vinny Kapachik was another tremendous good guard. Krause was on the other check tackle. And like I said, Marv Ward, mm -hmm. uh, off a good you know, fullback. Oh, uh, Davison. Davison was the other. Uh, okay. Stuff. And then, and me and uh, what is uh, what's Jim Thompson up to these days? You said he still lives in Brit. Yeah, I'm not sure. He used to be on the road work for a, a machine cleaning business. Okay. I'm not sure what he's doing right. Now. Okay, because in my in all my research. Um, he had some games where he had 14, 15, 16 tackles in a game on defense. Um, I wish they would have kept track of season stats in that day for tackles and stuff or anything besides just game to game stuff because he probably would be up there on the list pretty high for tackles in a season, even only playing eight games. He was double digits almost every game at some point. So, our board would be up there too, I'm sure. Yep, but I don't yep. know how you kept track all the stats that you have. It's amazing. Yep. So, yeah, people don't know. I, I made the book about Coach Sanger's era. I now have every is what I could find from before 1968 all the way back to 1899. So um, next year, my goal is to put out that new book to um, let people see the, uh, the new, the new, the, the new old stats, the new old records, um, how they compare with the Sanger era type stuff and with the most recent couple seasons of Sanger football, so it's going to be pretty neat to put it all together. I just don't have much in them, but I got involved in that this past year. Of There's a web, you go on the West Hancock website and find any annual back yep. home 48. Yep, yep. I've they, used that. They yeah. even have, I think, 1923 on there one random year. Um, yep. And then I use the Hancock County Preservation website to get a lot of my research, so it's pretty fun to, to see all that. So. Yep. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. I very grateful for that site. So, yep. yeah. A lot of people just don't know it's there. Yeah. Yep. It's I a neat try to work on canal and I'll get theirs complete before the consolidation. Yeah. Yep. There's some good stuff over there too. Definitely. I have one more sponsor and then we'll wrap things up here in a little bit here, Gene. Okay, um, I'd like to thank Renee Deemer with Deemer Realty, hometown hospitality and service with a smile. That's what Deemer Realty is all about. Helping buyers and sellers make a smooth transition when moving within or to the area is their top priority. Serving North Central Iowa since 1999, Deemer Realty has steadily grown over the years, establishing an outstanding record of sales in the North Iowa area that speaks to their dedication to every customer. That's Deemer Realty. Go to DeemerRealty.net and check them out. Um, 
what else? Uh, you were nine points away from never losing a football game at Brit. Um, you had a one point loss, an eight point loss, and then that tie, obviously. Um, how does that feel being a part of that era, um, that Steve Everett era um, that we are talking about? Oh, it's wonderful uh, memories. Uh, I even got to ran into Steve when he was back in Brit once, somebody at the V3 restaurant at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And we had a good visit. He always praised there with all of us. And we knew they were wonderful teams. He always enjoyed coming back and visiting. Yeah, yeah he passed good away memory. in 1996 or 97, I believe. Um, so it's been a little while since he's been gone. But yeah. um, who are some of the other teachers and coaches that you remember from your from your upbringing that you said Mrs. Everett was a fifth grade teacher that stood out to you. Any, any other teachers that you uh, looked up to? Well, we had a, a male teacher, Mr. Holstead. I don't know where he went, but he was, he, I learned more from him than by his other teacher in sixth grade. You don't yeah. see a man teacher like you in those grades a lot of times. Mm-hmm. He was excellent. He made you get things done. <laughs> yep. Yep, I'm the only male in my building, uh, general ed. So yeah, it's still not that common. So the kids yep. will remember that. I'm there. Yep. Oh, they they love my dad jokes. I always have a horrible, dumb, punny jokes for them, and they just cringe. But they'll they like it. They don't they don't say they do, but I know they do. So I forget it. The one thing I want to ask you that this Lee Martian had a yep. daughter, and she apparently wanted a job at 16 and went and. and Ask your dad for a job, and she worked in the in the pizza place. Yep, Peggy. Yep, and Peggy, and yep. um, you, she thought, or he thought, maybe you were born about that time. You yeah, eighty eighty six. Um, so I don't remember like a lot of her working there, but as she got older and went to college or whatever, she would always come back and um, just always kind of around. And when my boys were born. Um, she sent them each a, a Mickey Mouse Disney blanket wow. um, with, with their names on it. Um, yeah, so her and my mom was in her wedding, and they kept in touch over the years. And I Facebook is a great you know tool to keep in touch with people. And her husband Tim was a college basketball coach, and he'd come to Pella once in a while for really? with his team for a like a JV game or something, and I'd go Minneapolis. watch him. What's that? Don't live in Minneapolis. Yeah, up in that area. Yep. So, yep. Yep. I know. Yeah, they used to come down to Iowa for games and stuff. He was at, uh, I can't remember the college. Uh, it was a Christian college. I can't remember the name of it, but he's bounced around to a few places. But yep, I know. know Peggy that's, pretty well. That's amazing because I just learned that this week when I was talking to Lee. Yep. Both both her parents were in my class. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, it was, yeah. it's. Peggy too. Yep, that's what I remember. That song. That was your favorite song too, I think. Yep. I just remember people used to battle to get jobs at my parents' pizza place. Like if there was an opening, a bunch of the high school girls would apply, and it was. It sounded like it got kind of cutthroat for a while on who got the job because one of the perks was free pizzas and free movie rentals if you sure. worked there. So people, that was a big deal. So he told me that he said, "Dad, I'm going to go get a job." And she, he said, well, go to it. And she went up there and applied at, at your dad's shop and got the job. Yep. Do you want to hear the crazy thing? Sure. My parents sold that place 20 years ago already. It's been that long. It'll be July of 2022, and it'll be 20 years since they hung it up. So it, that just blows my mind a little bit that it's been now 20 already. Now he's the smallest reaper in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. Uh, I see him once in a while up town. Yeah, yep, yep. He's he's enjoying it for the most part. So, yeah. So, what keeps you busy these days, Gene? What do you what have you been up to? I'm pretty active with the Legion. I was going to mention that about Ewing. I see them a lot because yep. the the Navy chaplain, which I was very honored, and uh, I have kind of the last rites to say to the old World War Two and one the, the veterans that. Well, ceremonial. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy that. I, it's an honor, I guess. Yeah, it's neat. 
and like then, say, because of River City Chorus or Mason City, of, we're, we're joining a, a, with Waterloo for a show this spring. And, uh, I'm active with the praise team at the church. And I help out what I can with the trustees. Cool. So those little things, I keep the lawnmower going. Yeah. Yep. It's not this time of year. Yep. Yeah. Yep, definitely. And then you can go do what you want when you want. That's what I'm looking forward to someday. Go on my own schedule. So yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on here. Real quick, I'm gonna get to my sponsors and my upcoming episodes, and then we'll kind of say our last words and call it a night. So thanks again to my 12 sponsors for tonight: Britt Bar and Grill, Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, Mary Joe's Hobo House and Catering. Jay Hiscox of State Farm Insurance, First State Bank, Mojo Productions, Daniels Auto Collision, Katie Salon and Tanning, Deemer Realty, Nick Schmidt, Vexen Fishing and Tackle Industries, and Slayers Gunmiths, Gunsmithing of Fontenelle. Um, and every time I do one of these podcasts, it just reminds me of how many great businesses there are in Brit. Um, down where I teach down here in the, the three little towns that make up I-35 schools, there's hardly any business as we're so close to Des Moines everyone just goes to Des Moines for everything. So I just, I just think it's neat that there's so many, so many good businesses and they're all so generous of, you know, this type of stuff. So coming up on the podcast, uh, the Eisman boys, Chuck Mockley, Candace Wilson, Dwayne Cook, we've had to reschedule a few times, Jeff Nielsen, Bob Horner, John Wyland, Paul Hauge, uh, the Malin girls, Nate Schur, part two, Steve Kelly, Joseph Smith, Dave Paterud, Kevin Sanger, part two, 2007 football team, Travis Hagen, and I just added two more um, episodes for September. I'm already booked out through September, and that's Sarah Swanson. She's the um, associate athletic director at Upper Iowa, where a ton of Brit teachers uh, came from. The Sangers, Timmermans, you name it, Brums, a bunch of them came from Upper Iowa. And then Josh Hartman, he is a few years older than me. He was the athletic trainer for the Denver Broncos when they won the Super Bowl three, four, five years ago, whatever it was. So lots of cool Brit connections all around the place. So, all right, Gene, anything you want to throw out there last minute? I always kind of give that last little bit for any shout outs or things we missed earlier. I think, well, I think you've got some tremendous sponsors behind you. Those people make yeah. uh, recognition that people are awfully good about supporting people still going to Mason City. I, I, I admire that. Yep. That's what kept this sorry this town going. Mm -hmm. A lot of like you said, the community down there they don't realize what we've got going here. Oh yeah. Yep. It's it's a great town and I'm proud to say I'm from there. So definitely. Yep. I know yeah. Julie's asked me said, Well if you could go and live anywhere you wanted to, I said, Where would you go? And I said I really don't know. I think the ties are here. Great people are here. I'd probably come right back here. Yep, definitely. Every ch I don't get to come up as often as I'd like to anymore, but when I get a chance, I can't wait. I'll go from, you know, go see Bill Eccles at the cobbler shop and go across the street and get something to eat and go to the school if they're open and see some old teachers and, that I had in school. It's just so fun to reconnect. And then Facebook is just awesome to um, be able to keep in touch with people. So. Stop and see this old guy sometime. <laughs> yep, I will definitely. I'm hoping to get up for a basketball game before the season's over. So, you betcha. You bet. All right, Gene. Well, I appreciate you coming on here and go Eagles. It's been fun to talk to you. You bet. Appreciate it.